Hi, hello everyone. My name is Vivek. I am a software developer. I make videos about containers, Kubernetes, Go as a programming language, distributed systems, and sometimes about software engineering in general. So if you have been liking the kinds of the kind of videos that I make, uh, you should subscribe to the channel and you should consider following me on Twitter as well. Uh, in this particular video, we are going to uh, we are going to continue writing the CSI plugin that we have started in the previous videos. So if we talk about the things that we have that we have accomplished uh, or, or that we have completed uh, till now, uh, we were able to write a very basic skeleton of how our CSI plugin uh, is going to look like. Uh, we have already talked about CSI specification in details. Uh, we have talked about how Kubernetes integrates or how Kubernetes communicates with CSI plugin that is using CSI sidecar containers. So we were able to achieve, we were able to cover all these things in the previous videos. Uh, in this particular video, we are going to actually look into how we, how we can deploy that skeleton CSI plugin that we have uh, in our Kubernetes cluster. And then we will continue improving that CSI plugin. Now, uh, I I am I have created a Kubernetes cluster using using kind uh, just to show the things in this particular video. But obviously, when we try to uh, test the CSI plugin, we would actually be creating a DigitalOcean cluster so that things would make uh, more sense. Let's let's just go ahead and try to open the project that we have. And I have I have already pushed this entire project in in GitHub. So if you have if you have not looked into this if you want to follow along you can you can follow that project as well so if we talk about if we if we remember the video where we talked about how kubernetes communicates with csi plugin uh, we we discussed that there are some external containers there are some app, other other uh, external applications uh, that are written specifically for this purpose uh, they are going to they are going to keep watch on the let's say persistent volume claim resources and as soon as that resource is created these applications are going to call the csi plugin on behalf of kubernetes or or these these sidecar containers or these applications are going to translate the kubernetes request to respective csi plugin request so let's go ahead and try to try to actually uh, discuss how are we going to achieve that uh, in, in, in much more detail even though we have talked about it in the previous video but let's let's look into this in much more detail so let's assume uh, this is uh, the pod that we are going to create and in this particular pod we are obviously going to have a container and this is the container that is going to run our uh, main application that is BSOS that we have uh, that we have just written but just the skeleton and this application is actually implementing all the services that are specified in the in the CSI specification now we are so let's assume uh, this is a pod and now we will also have to deploy the sidecar container that we talked about uh, in the same pod and this particular sidecar container is going to be external external provisioner and this external provisioner is going to communicate with the rpcs that are exposed by uh, bsos and let's let's talk about how this is exactly going to happen and then we are going to create the manifests so if you remember uh, in the csi specification it is clearly mentioned that the csi plugin should expose the rpcs on on a unix domain socket or the grpc endpoints on a unix domain socket so let's say uh, let's say our application is our application bsos is is listening on a particular or, or running the grpc server on a particular uh, particular directory let's say or let's say our our csi plugin is exposing is exposing the rpcs uh, by starting the server on this particular uh, by by starting or by creating the domain socket unix domain socket on this particular directory now 
the external provisioner that we are running, this external provisioner should be able to access that domain socket, Unix domain socket, to make a call to the gRPC services that are exposed by that domain socket. Now, let me try to summarize that once again. So, the, the service, the plugin that we have written that implements all the services, uh, this plugin is actually going to expose all the gRPC endpoints on a specific uh, Unix domain socket that is created on a on a specific directory on on this particular container and to call those gRPC services this external provisioner should be able to access that direct directory and that is the reason we are going to use the con concept of uh, volumes uh, in case of Kubernetes but this volume is actually not going to be be persistent volume uh, we are we are going to use a volume of type empty dir and once we have created the volume of type empty uh, we can we can mount this volume at a particular particular directory particular file system in in the main container as well as we can use or sorry we can mount the same volume in the sidecar container as well so now if you see if we if we have for example mounted let's say uh, var lib slash abc and then we are creating a Unix domain socket in this particular directory. If main container is creating a Unix domain socket in this particular directory and we are mounting the same directory in the sidecar container as well, it, sim it, it simply means that external provisioner will also be able to or also has access to that CSI domain socket and would be able to communicate with the gRPC services that are running, that are running on that Unix domain socket. Does that make sense? Uh, if you have any question about this, uh, feel free to comment. I would be more than happy to answer them. So let's go ahead and try to actually try to actually achieve this. So I'm pretty sure that you you know that to actually get something deployed on Kubernetes, we will first have to uh, we'll have to we will we will first have to uh, containerize that. So I'm going to create a Docker file and let's start from Alpine. And since we have the binary present binary present already, a uh, BSOS, we are just going to copy this binary and then we are going to run run the binary. Now, obviously, this is not the best way to create the Docker files. There are chances that you would want to build the application in the Docker file itself. But just for the simplicity sake, I'm just I'm, I'm going to copy the binary. So copy BSOS to user local bin and bsos and then we are going to specify uh, the entry point user local bin bsos so as soon as we try to run this particular docker image this particular binary is going to is going to run so let's go ahead and try to try to build the docker image so docker build hyphen t deleting ggits and we are going to name it bsos and let's tag it 0.0.1 uh, underscore underscore YouTube and we will have to specify context as well and now now that the image has been built let's go ahead and try to push it and once it has been pushed what we are going to do is we are going to create a, a manifest or deployment manifest that is going to use this particular this particular docker image so let's go ahead and try to create that as well so first of all i'm going to create a directory so if you notice here we are on the same directory so mkdir manifests once manifests directory has been created let's go ahead and try to create the deployment manifest using using this particular image as our main con main container so create deployment we are not going to specify namespace because we are planning to deploy everything on default namespace uh, for now so we are going to specify or let's name it bsos and we are going to specify the image to be the image that we have just built and we don't want to create it let's generate the manifest and name it name it controller hyphen plugin dot yaml and if we go ahead and try to look into the manifest that has been generated if you see we have one container that is running this particular this particular image now if we go ahead and try to have a look into this particular diagram we will have to we will have to 
create a volume of type empty dir and we will have to mount that volume at a specific at a specific location so that a domain socket can be created on that location and we will mount the same directory or same volume to the sidecar container as well so that sidecar would also have access to the same csi domain socket so let's go ahead and try to create a volume of type of type empty dir so empty dir volume kubernetes I don't remember the syntax obviously. So this is how we can create a volume of, of type empty dir. So this should be okay. So now that we have created the volume, if we go back to this diagram once again, we have created the volume. Now we have to mount this volume at a particular directory in, in the main container. So let's go ahead and try to do that. So we have to volume mount. And if you look at the same example, once again, this is how we can mount that volume. So we will have to specify mount path and mount path is going to be so again we can we can decide we can decide this path if you remember when we tried to run the application in in the previous video we can for now decide this path uh, to var lib and and something so let's go ahead and 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 try to make a var lib csi sockets plugin proxy so now what, what's going to happen is this particular this particular volume of type empty dir is going to get mounted at this particular at this particular path in in the main container and we know that if we look into the main.co we can specify uh, where our gRPC server is going to run at by hyphen hyphen endpoint flag. So that's what we are going to that's what we are going to do now. So now that we have mounted this, let's go ahead and try to set the try to try to set the argument that our main.go file expects. So let's go ahead and again try to look for uh, providing args in Kubernetes pod. And this is how we can this is how we can specify uh, the arguments. So let's go ahead and try to and try to do this. So in controller plugin dot yaml, we can specify args and args obviously is an array here. So either we can specify the args like this or we can use a hyphen here. So to specify the args, what we are going to do is we are going to specify uh, endpoint. So for now, let's just go ahead and try to specify the endpoints. But in the in the uh, later videos, we can try to specify the token token as well. So hyphen hyphen endpoint and endpoint is going to be endpoint is going to be Unix colon double slash and then slash var lib CSI sockets plugin proxy and then CSI dot sock. So what we have to do is we have to set that as as an environment variable. So let's go ahead and try to set the environment variable. Uh, the name is going to be CSI endpoint and the value is going to be slash CSI sock and then we are going to specify the scheme to be Unix. I, I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, again, uh, let me know uh, and I would be more than happy to answer your question. So now that we have an environment variable called CSI endpoint set to a particular 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 endpoint or URI, we can use this in the in the flag that we are passing uh, to our application. Now there are chances that there are other ways to achieve this as well. Uh, you could have just you could have just read this particular endpoint variable instead of 
instead of reading that from this particular flag. So that's also fine. Uh, that's not a problem. You can, you can totally do that. Uh, now that we have specified the, the end point here, one part of this one part of this diagram is actually done we have created the volume we have mounted that volume in the main container now let's go ahead and try to run the other container that is external provisioner you should know about this cut you should know about the sidecar container because uh, there is another video where i have covered where i have covered what are csi sidecar containers and how do they communicate or how do they help kubernetes to translate Kubernetes requests to CSI plugin requests. So I have already opened the external provisioner GitHub repo here, and if we go ahead and try to look into the try to look into the uh, arguments that it ex expects. So if you see hyphen hyphen CSI address is the address is the path using which we can specify where exactly CSI plugin CSI plugin is running. So this is the path to the CSI driver socket inside the pod that the external provisional container will use to issue CSI operations. Right. So this is the main thing that we have to specify to this external provisioner. So let's go ahead and try to create another container and we are going to specify the image to be I'm going to use 31310 uh, because this is what I have tested the things with. So specify the container image to be 310 and I'm going to name it external hyphen provisioner and once we have image and name we, we will also have to specify if you see here the the argument that we that we just looked into and let's go ahead and try to specify the argument as well so args and for args we are going to specify we are going to specify where exactly uh, where exactly our CSI plugin or sorry domain, Unix domain socket is, is present and so that external provisioner can call the CSI plugin. But before doing that, we will also have to mount the same volume in, in, the, in the sidecar container as well. So let's go ahead and try to mount this. So volume mounts and we are going to in volume mount, we'll have to specify name as well. So name is going to be, let's call it, let's call it domain, domain socket. And we are going to mount it at the exact same path where we mounted that to where, where, we, where, where we mounted that in the in the uh, main container. So now we know that our our Unix domain socket is present at var lib csi sockets plugin proxy and then csi dot sock. So let's go ahead and try to try to set another environment variable here uh, like we did for the main container. So uh, environment name is going to be again let's say csi underscore endpoint and value is going to be because we know that this is this is where this is where uh, the unix domain socket is created and let's set that in the in the sidebar container so now if you if you yeah if i try to summarize uh, this once again to make sure that we are able to share we are able to share the unix domain socket between two between two containers we have created an we have created a volume of type empty dir and that volume is mounted or uh, that volume is mounted at the same directory on both of these containers now it's okay if you mount now it's okay if you mount that at a different directory as well uh, that that i don't think that is going to be a problem but for now just just for the simplicity i have mounted that at the same location and then i have specified that this is where the this is where the unix this is the unix domain socket where all the grpc that are specified in the csi specification are are implemented 
So now let's go ahead and try to try to deploy this. So I'm going to watch for the pods on default namespace. So create hyphen F uh, manifests and then controller plugin dot YAML and it should create it should create a pod here with two containers and let's go ahead and try to look into try to look into the logs for those pods so logs of the pod get logs from all the containers and it says Okay, uh, building cube configs from running for running in cluster still connecting to. Okay, so it looks like there is something wrong with our main container and the server in the main container is not running. That is the reason external provisioner is not able to is not able to communicate with that with that uh, with that csi plugin so let's go ahead and try to the name of the main container is this is bsos okay so error removing listen address i think there is a problem in our in our code so if we go to main.co and before actually starting the grpc server at the specified location uh, we try to we try to remove it and if it's not present there we should not uh, we should not fail so we should have a check here so this is this is what's failing so error removing listen address no such file or directory if error is not equals to nil so that's true and os dot is exists error It simply means that the the error says that the file already exists so the file already exists is not a problem is exist returns a boolean indicating whether the error is known to report a file or directory already exists and in our case we want to make sure that we are not failing if that file does not exist right so let's make it is not exist because if error is not nil and if the error is not does not exist the file does not exist in that case we want to return the error if the file does not exist in that case we are going to create a new file right so that is the reason we will have to uh, we will have to use is not exist here now obviously we will have to rebuild the application so so docker build and we are going to call it to and then docker push and we will have to reapply uh, the deployment that we have so Jupyter apply hyphen f manifests and controller plugin dot yaml and it should be the pod should be recreated. Uh, okay, hold on. We will have to we will have to change the image here as well. This image is going to be and now if we apply 
the deployment if you see the new pod was just started and now let's go ahead and try to look into the logs of new pod so kubectl logs and all containers hyphen f I'm, I'm creating the deployment again. Okay, so yeah, sorry about this. So OS dot is not exist. So if error is not nil and the error says the file does not exist. So we don't even need that uh, negation here, I think. So yeah, it, it should work. Uh, let's see, sorry about this. So, oh, okay. So we rebuild, we rebuilt the image, but we did not build the binary. So I think that that was the problem. So it is going to be not here and we will have to basically rebuild the binary. And once we have rebuilt the binary, we are going to build the image again. And then we are going to push it and once we have pushed it, we will have to obviously update the tag here and then deploy this again. So once it is pushed, we are going to apply the deployment. And now let's go ahead and see, see what's happening with the logs. So kubectl logs and then hyphen f and all containers hyphen f and if you see here now it says uh, building cube config for running in cluster and then it also says that uh, probing csi driver for, for readiness so now it simply means that uh, it was able to figure out that there is something there is a grpc server running at this particular domain socket and now the external provisioner is trying trying to trying to make sure that the that the health of the health of csi plugin is actually uh, actually good or not and that is the reason if you see here it is trying to uh, make a request and it, it clearly is saying that proving csi driver for readiness and uh, it says that csi driver probe failed and basically it says that it is saying that grpc that was called to make sure that csi driver is healthy or not uh, did not respond with success success response so now now that we now we were actually able to make sure that the main container and sidecar container are actually uh, running 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 together external provisioner tried to call probe rpc if we go to again if we go to specification and if we go to identity uh, identity service here identity service uh, should implement a probe method that would actually specify if the plugin is in in healthy state or not so apart from that even if we implement probe it is going to or external provisioner sidecar is going to call uh, the plugin info as well as plugin capabilities to figure out uh, the plugin name as well as all the all the capabilities that this plugin has csi plugin has at in in whole so let's go ahead and try to implement these three methods uh, from from identity plugin or identity service so we have all these uh, all these methods here and if we try to implement probe so i think we have uh, we should have a boolean 
field that should specify if the if the plugin is uh, if the plugin is ready or not so let's call this it, let's call this ready and and the type is obviously going to be bool and we can set it to true when we run uh, when we run the grpc server so we are going to specify ready to be to be true and this is what we can return when probe of identity service is called so identity and we are going to return the response csi.probe response and this is going to be ready and the type of this type of this ready is going to be wrap wrappers pb dot bool value and here we can actually specify uh, actually specify if the plugin is ready or not now if i go ahead and try to build and deploy this application uh, again external provisioner is going to complain that even though it was able to figure out that csi plugin is running successfully it was not able to call plugin info and plugin capabilities successfully so let's go ahead and try to implement these as well so so get plugin info response and i think let's for now let's just let's just return with uh, the name and i think we should have name somewhere specified uh, in the in the driver dot go and this is the name that is using which we have initialized driver so we can directly use d dot name and now that we have implemented git plugin info let's go ahead and try to implement git plugin capabilities so let's go ahead and try to look into uh, what exactly so if you see here uh, a node only plugin component supplies only the node service its plugin get plugin capabilities rpc does not report the controller service capabilities so it simply says that uh, if if we are installing csi plugin in in such a way that we are just installing node plugin in that case get plugin capabilities is not going to report that this plugin is is implementing controller service as well but if the plugin is implementing controller service in that case it should report that using get plugin capabilities if we try to look for a more detailed explanation so here if you see uh, this required rpc allows container orchestrator to query the supported capabilities of the plugin as a whole uh, grant some of all, all the capabilities and and things like that right so let's go ahead and try to specify that this plugin actually implements controller service as well so this is going to return csi dot get plugin capability response here and it is going to capabilities it is going to have capabilities and it is going to be an array of capabilities Type, type is going to be of so if you look at if you look at this particular struct uh, thankfully fortunately uh, go def is working for me that is the reason i'm getting all these suggestions but you if you look at this particular struct you would be able to figure out how how do you exactly uh, form that struct manually so for example if you look at plugin capability you would see type uh, and then this is another type that we are going to that we are going to specify so yeah it's not it's not uh, that that hard and here we are going to specify that we implement or or this particular plugin has has controller service i think this is redundant so we can we can remove this i i hope this makes sense uh, using get plugin capabilities we are just trying to specify that this plugin does implement controller service because this is what this is what is mentioned in the csi specification so let's go ahead and try to try to build this entire thing once again and once we have built the entire thing once again uh, let's build the container image and then we obviously we are going to push the image and then change the deployment dot ml to use the updated version that is four and once the image has been pushed 
we are going to apply the controller plugin manifest that we have and we are going to look for the logs of this particular pod and now if you see here if we if we look at the logs it says probing csi driver for readiness and then it says error getting csi driver capabilities error getting csi driver capabilities it simply means that we are not actually we are not actually implementing uh, the the if you look at controller get get capabilities uh, we will have to make sure that we are implementing we are implementing that uh, get controller capabilities rpc as well so let's go ahead and implement okay so since since we have specified that since we have specified by 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 implementing git plugin capabilities that this plugin does have a controller service running in that case if you remember the diagram once again we have said that this plugin is running a controller service that is the reason external provisioner is trying to trying to get capabilities of the controller as well right does that make sense so let's go ahead and try to implement get controller capabilities for this for the csi plugin so we have controller get capabilities we should have controller get capabilities capabilities somewhere and let's go ahead and try to try to implement this so uh, if you look at the response here uh, this is how the response looks like so controller get capabilities response is going to have capabilities that is of type controller service array of references to controller service capability so let's go ahead and try to return this and capabilities is going to be let's say caps and let's go ahead and try to create try to create a variable of type variable named caps and this is going to be of type asterisk and the type is going to be this okay i hope this makes sense and now what we have to do is we have to specify that uh, the capabilities that this controller supports is uh, creation of volume deletion of volume and then uh, obviously once the volume has been created if you remember the previous video that volume should also get attached to the node so again publish and unpublish volume so let's go ahead and try to figure out from figure that out from uh, the csi specification so if you see here this is the capability that we have to create delete volume and then publish unpublish volume so these are the two uh, these are the two capabilities that we have to specify uh, that controller implements so we are going to what we are going to do is for underscore comma capability colon equals to range uh, slice of this is the type and this is from csi and these are the two values that we are going to specify support of obviously csi dot and then csi dot publish and publish volume okay so now what we have to do is we have to specify we have to we have to create uh, two structs controller service service capabilities append them into caps and then we would be we would be good so caps dot append and 
this is what's being expected type is going to be controller service capability type and then rpc is going to be rpc type and then type is going to be c <coughs> excuse me so now i i hope this makes sense so uh, we are just returning the response that that uh, it should return and then we are actually forming uh, we are actually specifying that these are the two, two these are the two capabilities that this controller service uh, implements now let's go ahead and try to try to build this uh, once again so go build and build the docker image change the tag and then obviously push that docker image and update the manifest five and let's go ahead and try to try to apply uh, this this deployment manifest once again and now we should get another pod and if we look into the logs of the pod okay so here we go now if you see at least the pod is running successfully but we are still seeing obviously seeing some of the some of the errors here so if you see if you see now external provisioner so now external provisioner was actually able to figure out that these are the these are the these are the things uh, that csi plugin supports and that is the reason it started watching on some of the resources uh, but it was not able to uh, because it doesn't have access to it doesn't have authorization to watch on those resources so that is the reason it started complaining complaining those things uh, if i yeah again i will try to summarize this at the end but let's go ahead and try to create try to set up the r back so if you see here it clearly says that uh, system service account default default so default service account from default namespace cannot list resources volume attachments in group this at cluster scope so this particular pod as of now is being run as as default service account so if we try to go if we if we go ahead and try to look into the service account so edit pod uh, the service account is going to be default because we have not specified any custom service account. So let's go ahead and try to create a service account. So cube cuttle create service account and we are going to name it. We are going to name it BSOS hyphen service account and let's let's create the manifest so that we can have a look and we are going to call it sa.yaml. Once we have created once we have created the service account so let's let's also create it maybe okay we have to store that in manifests and once we have stored that in manifests if we go ahead and try to have a look uh, this is how the service account looks nothing fancy here uh, just na just the name of the service account now let's go ahead and try to create a cluster role because obviously if you look at if you look at this error message it says that uh, it says that the the external provisioner needs to needs to have the authorization to list the resources this particular resource in api group this at a cluster scope so let's go ahead and try to create uh, the try to create the the cluster role and then obviously uh, role binding so kubectl create cluster role this cluster role is going to have verb list and let's see if it needs another verbs as well so it also needs access to storage classes uh, list storage classes list persistent volume claims list volume attachments okay so storage classes persistent volume claims and volume attachments so these are the things that it looks like this service account needs so we are going to specify those things so list and in resources we are going to specify 
we are going to specify the things that that our plugin is complaining for so volume attachments and then we are also going to specify storage classes and then obviously uh, persistent volume claims and we are going to create just the manifest as of now so that we can have a look so we are going to call it call it bsos hyphen cr dot yaml okay and we will have to specify the name as well so let's call it bsos hyphen cluster role and let's go ahead and try to try to have a look into the manifest that was generated so if you see here uh, persistent volume claims list on pvcs and list on volume attachments and storage classes and now that we have created now that we have created the cluster rule binding uh, let's go ahead and try to try to try to associate service account that we have created with the cluster rule binding that we just created so kubectl create rule binding and this rule binding is going to make association or cluster rule binding again you can you can fine tune the r back that is that is not the main topic of this video so we are going to call it bsos hyphen crb this is going to specify service account to be default slash default so not not default slash default but default default namespace and the service account name is bsos hyphen sa and then cluster role is going to be i think it can be role binding as well but i'm not sure so cluster role is going to be the cluster role that we have created and again we are just going to generate the manifest first and we are going to call it bsos hyphen cluster role binding dot yaml and okay so this is how name should be i i specified i specified namespace slash name but it should be namespace colon name so let's go ahead and try to look into okay so we generated at the wrong path again so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run the same command but i'm going to generate the manifest at this so now let's go ahead and try to look at the cluster rule binding so what 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 this cluster rule binding is doing is if you see here it, it is just associating the, the service account with the cluster rule that we have created and now we have cluster rule cluster role cluster rule binding service account but we have not specified that this is the service account that should be used by the by the pod so let's go ahead and try to specify that in the in the pod so we are going to specify that i'm not sure if this is the format but let's see service account name bsos iphone sa and let's go ahead and try to apply everything once again so delete hyphen f everything from manifests and then create everything or apply everything from manifests okay so cluster rule binding was cluster rule was created cluster rule binding was created deployment and service account uh, let's go ahead and try to have a look into the logs of this pod okay so it says failed to watch so it looks like we obviously need watch permission permission as well and it obviously shows says starring provisioner controller okay so it needs access to persistent volumes as well so let's go ahead and try to add them so so it says volume attachment watch on volume attachment so let's open cluster role and 
for volume attachments we have to specify watch as well and once we have specified watch uh, we also have to specify list on persistent volumes so list on persistent volumes uh, once we have specified list on persistent volumes uh, let's see if it'll, it is trying to do something else so watch on storage class so watch on storage class could be handled here watch on storage class fail to watch persistent volume claim so we will have to specify watch for these as well and list persistent volumes this is handled and i think we should be uh, we should be good so let's go ahead and try to uh, try to apply these uh, once again and see see what happens just to be sure i'm going to delete the pod manually okay so now if you see here uh, if you see here starting save volume queue started provisioner controller bsos.vvxing.dev because this is the this is the csi plugin name that we have specified uh, in the in the uh, driver dot driver dot go bsos.vvxing.dev so now if you see we were successfully able to uh, deploy this plugin that we have written in kubernetes and the external provisioner that is deployed along with csi plugin is successfully able to communicate to our controller service that is deployed in the same pod now obviously in the next video we are going to look into if we create a persistent volume claim resource would external provisioner actually going to call create volume of the controller service create volume rpc of controller plugin that is what we are going to look into in the in the, in, in the in the next video but for now let's just go ahead and try to try to uh, summarize the thing that we uh, that we have that we have just that we have just implemented so we we know that we know that we have created a particular pod and in this pod we have two containers this is the one container this is the other container this is external provisioner and this is bsos main container and we also know that this particular container does implement some endpoints so for example this endpoint is going to be get plugin capabilities this is going to be uh, get plugin info and this is going to be for example probe and obviously uh, once we have created the volume we have mounted this volume on the sidecar as well uh, once once this external provisioner starts it is going to make a request to it is going to make a re first it's going to it's going to check if there is a grpc server running on the unix domain socket that was mounted because we are basically mounting unix domain socket to the side sidecar container and once it figures that there is a server running that that external provisioner is going to call git plug initially it's going to call probe and then it is going to call get plugin info and get plugin capabilities now once get get plugin capabilities it is going to re return that it also uh, it is it actually implements the controller service in that case external provisioner is going to call the call the controller get capabilities so controller get capabilities from the controller service and that is the reason it it was failing if you remember even after we have we had implemented these three these three rpcs and once we implemented controller get capabilities external provisioner was trying to was trying to list and watch some of the kubernetes resources but this pod doesn't have this pod didn't didn't have access to those resources that is that is the reason uh, we created a custom service account 
uh, we created cluster role binding, cluster role to give this pod permission. And after that, it was able to actually list on those resources. So I, I hope this makes sense. And once, uh, once this pod, this external provisioner is able to uh, list and watch on those resources, in the next video, obviously, we are going to look into how if we create a PVC on the cluster, this external provisioner is going to call create volume RPC of the CSI plugin. Because now if you if you see here, it knows it knows basically uh, everything about uh, about the CSI plugin. Uh, so yeah, I think this is uh, this was pretty much it that I wanted to talk about in this particular video. If you think that this is going to be helpful to your colleagues, classmates, uh, share it with them. Uh, follow me on Twitter subscribe here like the video thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one thanks so much